derivative rules are absolutely essential for doing any kind of difficult computation. I hope you remember these. The most important rule, the one rule that we absolutely use over and over is that of linearity. Differentiation is a linear operator on functions. We'll have more to say about that later, but for now, you probably learned this in terms of two rules. The addition rule, which in differential notation says that the derivative of u plus v is the derivative of u plus the derivative of v. And the scalar multiplication rule, which says if you look at the derivative of a constant c times u, then that's really equal to that constant c times the derivative of u. Both of these together imply that differentiation is a linear operator. Now, how do we justify something like this? Well, let's use our new interpretation of the derivative in terms of first order variation, in terms of Taylor expansion, to give a really simple justification of these results without having to use limits. Let's begin with the addition rule. Compute the derivative of the function given by u plus v of x, which is, of course, u of x plus v of x. Now, our goal is to show that the derivative of u plus v is really the derivative of u plus the derivative of v. This is not going to be difficult, but watch how we do this. Let's take that function u plus v and evaluate it at x plus h. That is, of course, u of x plus h plus v of x plus h by definition. And now, since h is very small, we're going to expand these out using our Taylor interpretation, our first order variation interpretation of the derivative. u of x plus h is u of x plus du dx times h plus a whole bunch of other terms that are all in big O of h squared as h goes to zero. We could do the same thing with v of x plus h. That's v of x plus dv dx times h plus big O of h squared. And now that we have those expansions, we collect all of the terms order by order, term by term, in the size of h. The zeroth order terms are simply u of x and v of x. So we put those together as u plus v at x. Now, here's the thing. What are the first order terms? What are the things that have an h in them? Well, there's a du dx times h and a dv dx times h. Factoring that h out, we get du dx plus dv dx. Everything else, all the other terms, collapse into a big O of h squared trash can. And this is it. This is all there is to it because the coefficient of the first order term is the derivative of the function that we're investigating. That is the proof of the addition rule using a Taylor expansion. Now there's not much to it. I'm gonna let you do the corresponding proof for scalar multiplication because it's really the same thing. It's not that bad at all. Where things start to get a little more interesting is when you look at say the product rule Consider the derivative of u times v as a function of x. That's u of x times v of x. We know the product rule is supposed to be that the derivative of u times v is u times the derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. How do we get that? Where does that come from? Do the same thing. Evaluate u times v at x plus h. That's u of x plus h times v of x plus h by definition. If we expand these terms out, what do we get? For u of x plus h, we get u of x plus du dx times h plus big O of h squared as h goes to zero. For v of x plus h, we get v of x plus dv dx times h plus big O of h squared. Now, multiplying these two together, just like they were polynomials, collecting terms by order of h. The zeroth order term is u times v at x. What are the first order terms? What's everything that's got just a single h in it? Doing that multiplication reveals that what we have is 
u times dv dx plus v times du dx. And every other term, every other thing that's multiplied together falls into a big O of h squared trash can. And so that coefficient of the first order variation is the derivative. u times dv dx plus v times du dx. That's it. That's the product rule.